Good morning. Hey, good morning. How are you? I'm all right. So I'm, I'm, I uh, constructed a, f a series of tweets manually, finally, um, one of which was yesterday and the other one was this morning. I had a 6, 6 a.m. meeting this morning. Awesome. Congratulations. So, yay. Um, anyway. That's since a nice I was, way to start back after a holiday, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Um, so I was up anyway. So I sent a tweet out at 7, um, posting the agenda, and then I did so yesterday as well. I... Um, I, uh, there's one thing I need to figure out how to do, but uh, assuming that, that I figure that out, maybe we can get to the point where it's automatically done every Monday and I don't have to be up at seven to do it. Okay. Um, hopefully that might drive some attendance. So nice numbers last week. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the uh, the the previous high was like not. I don't even think we broke six hundred before for a um, week long for a week long period. We we did we did once. I don't remember what the occasion was, but we did once. But yeah, close to fourteen hundred is is a very nice more than doubled. Yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy, and my theory I think is 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 working out. If you look at the the breakdown, um, the uh, the 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 lead one was Ansible, and I don't think that was a surprise. But then the this. No. The second one was a, the Linux basics, and then Git, and then Bash, and then YAML. Right. Yeah, I noticed that too. So we're going to see, I think, a little different. The the the, the fact that the the um, the lesson catalog is is randomized. Um, I think we're going to see some some better, um, or at least more accurate, like popularity counts. Um, is it still? Uh, I, I mean. It, all of those are kind of the fundamentals. Um, does it is it is it randomized to to, to land on fundamentals, or, or if that's just it was the happenstance this week? I think it's the I think it's the happenstance because there are fundamental lessons further way further down the list. Like Jinja is fourth from last. Um, oh. that isn't it is interesting. And REST APIs is like seventh or eighth. Yeah. So it's it does seem to be sort of that that and Ansible of course is not is not a fundamentals lesson so I don't know maybe that's just how it worked out maybe maybe people are just migrating to those uh, migrating to those lessons I mean if you look at the catalog it literally you for you know refresh the page it's populated by by a you know um, an unordered data type in the back end so there's it, there's no ordering you know that's possible basically if you refresh it you get you get different results every time. So who knows? Could be that there could be that they go to the uh, drop down and they 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 click fundamentals first. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if that's something we could see in Google Analytics. I, I still don't know. When it comes down when it comes down to like drilling in like that kind of detail, I'm not even sure if it shows it. And even if it did, I'm not a power user for Google Analytics. I know basic stuff like page views and stuff like that. Yeah, there are some workflow or there are some like user interaction flow reports you can get crazy detailed with, but I just I haven't gotten down gone down that. Are they are they uh, are they paid reports or they're all sort of part of the package? I, it's part of the package, I think. I mean, I'm sure there are some aspects that that are paid, but like I said, I I would expect that there are a lot of things that I just haven't gotten into myself that are part of the yeah. package, so I haven't even. When it comes time to getting to, to you know features that are so advanced that you have to pay for it, I'm not even I'm not even close to being able to consume the, those things. Okay. I would love for somebody who knows what they're doing to just take it and and make pretty pictures with it. Yeah. Um, talk to me again in a few weeks. Not that okay. I know a lot about it, but I'm you know I would be interested in learning, so I I wouldn't mind just dedicating some time to it in a few weeks. Yeah, I'm assuming that's the time frame of when you're done with the uh, your current. My other stuff, yes. Yeah, the, the other stuff, yeah. So okay. Not done, but you know, over the hump. The bulk, yeah, the bulk of it. Yeah, that's fine. I think I invited a few other a few other folks within Juniper who like one who 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 do know a lot, but I don't think they've looked at it. Mm -hmm. I don't think they've looked at it. I just was mostly seeking um, help, just with. You know, analysis. In fact, I think it was somebody within Juniper that was asking for the data, and I'm like, "Hey, why don't you just log in, <laughs> to take a peek?" Because yeah, 
I, I don't need to be the proxy for this because I'm right. just gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna dumb it down for myself. Um, okay, so let me go through the agenda. Um, there's a few things we can show. Am I ready to show? That is the question. Uh, okay. So a uh, recap of the launch. So I, I mean, we were kind of just talking about this, so I'll just show the visuals just for impact. Um, instead of the last seven days, let's do previous week. There we go. So this is when we launched, right? About here this is when we started sending everything out. Um, things, <laughs> I remember my first tweet I sent like here. And I'm like, hey, a lot of people found the Ansible lesson. And little did I know that it would literally triple um, in terms of uh, concurrent lesson usage. Now, keep in mind, this isn't the only thing going on. Like, there were 19 people using the Ansible lesson at this point. Um, or at least, actually, it looks like closer to 22. Um, but there were a lot of other lessons in use, too, so a lot of which had two lessons in use. So, you know, it wasn't just the Ansible show that would just... Um, there was actually a lot going on. The thing is, the, the thing that makes this the this big peak so impressive is because we actually do have, what is this like? I don't know, 20, 20 so lessons in in the in the curriculum, and so you're going to see um, a lot of overlap here. Like if you look, if you drill down into the into the the actual visualization here, you can see that there's a lot of lessons overlapping on top of each other. So the the visual doesn't actually show like, it doesn't actually show like total lessons. So if there's one lesson of one lesson and there's and, and there's one other instance of another lesson being used those, those sit on top of each other so just keep that in mind um but uh yeah the um the the usage was good and you can see i added a counter here the the official number for the week was 1317 lessons launched um and uh if you look at uh this uh, you can see the uh, the breakdown here. We have this data in a spreadsheet um, that's that's I think public actually. I think we've linked to it several times, but if not, we could fix that. the um, uh, The breakdown is is really cool. The you know first lesson is Ansible, obviously pretty pretty big piece of content with 531 for the week. But the other ones had a pretty good showing too. And as as we kind of discussed, um, the the fundamentals one. Um, the fundamentals lessons definitely showed up. And I think this is important because now the new web UI randomizes the catalog. So these are, the people are actually seeking these lessons out as opposed to um, just sort of clicking on the first thing they see. Um, so I think that's cool. Um, the, uh, the, this is, I, obviously I'd, I'd, I'd wanna have more than just one week worth of data, um, especially a launch week, which has its own biases built in. But um, in general, I'm feeling good about the, the fact that I'm 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 sort of personally focusing in terms of curriculum development, well, a I'm I'm feeling good about that in general, but also the specific curriculum um, elements that I personally am committing to keeping you know momentum on are those fundamental lessons like Git and REST APIs, which is going to be um, you know sort of the ne the next few months worth of new content. I'm feeling good about that because it it kind of sh it kind of feels like there's a there's interest. Yeah, um, is is Sean up for for taking on kind of the next round of uh, Ansible stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, we were kind of talking about that on the last meeting that we had with them. Um, uh, I think probably the next step is to, I can't remember. I, I have notes on this. I just don't have them in front of me. Um, but yeah, there's definitely interest. In fact, I think for Sean, the the big thing is like, look, the the initial Ansible lesson was a was a good step in the right direction in terms of just getting interest within within red hat for nra labs mm -hmm. um the real the real ammo that he's going to want is is to sort of continue down that path and build in as much ansible content as possible um including some of their higher level management stuff so that's there's i i won't have to i won't have to convince him of that for sure um it's just a matter of of getting it done and and when so i'm sure we'll find time for that over the next month or two Um, which is exciting because I think obviously there's also interest uh, from the user's perspective in, in more Ansible content. So I think we can make that happen. Um, um, okay. I, I'm, I'm still I'm still poking around for the um, the spreadsheet that you thought was online. Um, I'm not finding it, but it's, it's it's the one we shared with Packet Pushers. Yeah, no, way, I know. Way back. 
I'm not, I'm not, I'm not finding it, but you know, this might be a good place to, Stats. um, I found it. Just hmm. pin it as a category or a topic just at the top of the curriculum page. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll put it somewhere. Um, let me figure out where I was. I have so many things open. Oh my God. Okay. So here is uh, where it gets posted. Um, one thing I discovered, so I have, there's, there's automation running in the back end. The same thing that posts the, those stats to Slack also posts them here. Um, and I, <laughs> I could, I, this is, by the way, this is easily fixable. I just haven't gotten uh, around to it, but in this spreadsheet, we're missing most of November and all of December. <laughs> Um, in fact, uh, from, from early November through, in fact, all of January as well, um, in the spreadsheet, the data still exists in the, this is not the primary way of, st of storing the, st the statistics. Right. So I could, I could easily go back and get, you know, go, f go to the source and, and get them. Um, but I just haven't yet. Uh, but anyway, the point I'm trying to make is the reason that it's that, that we don't have those stats is because apparently Google sheets is limited to column a E like it won't let you create more columns. <laughs> Excel wins. Okay, maybe I, hold on. I'm second guessing myself now because I can just do it manually. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, I will figure that out. But regardless, we have a second, sh a second sheet. I took, I took the data that we had already and I put it on, I put it on its own sheet and now the automation is resumed. Um, as you can see, everything got posted correctly. We had also, by the way, the, um, the, the week before this with a measly 360, which apparently included 22 um, instances of the Ansible lesson pre-launch, because I, I, I think I turned on the telemetry for this for, um, before, before the launch, which makes sense. But uh, anyway, yeah, 1388. So we'll track this going forward. I think this, especially this, this, uh, this new data set that, you know, that's post launch and, and like sort of randomized, we're going to be able to actually see from a, you know, from a weekly perspective, what has grown in popularity and what has decreased in popularity. I think that sort of macro view might be helpful. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I will, in, I will reinvest some time into cleaning this uh, sheet up and making sure that it, um, that it works properly. It has all the data that we need. Um, and, um, and yeah, and then I'll post it somewhere. Uh, oh, so kicking off development of the user survey. I, I, I really hoped that I would have something to share by today, but I don't um, in terms of a draft. So I'll, I'll do that. I'll start that this week. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll have something to share next week that we can take a peek at. Um, yeah, so I will, so question here, um, are we thinking primarily it's about um, the, the curriculum and, and curriculum interests and needs, or is it more sort of like user experience or both? Probably, the, I mean, more the former. I mean, I, w I wouldn't say it, it would rule either of them, it, you know, wouldn't rule like UX out. I think that's, that's okay. Um, well, what I don't want to do, is I don't want it to turn into like a, hey, I had an issue this one time and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of not what I'm going after. Cause that's, that's more just like troubleshooting in the moment. And we, we have plans for, helping out with, with things like that, like little, little help boxes in the UI that you can click and, you know, send your debug info information to the, to the team and, and whatnot. I, we're, we're still going to do that for the survey. Um, I, I, I would say that there probably are some UX related things that, that we could ask. Um, we just got to be careful about opening up the can of worms there. Mostly though, I think I'm, I'm, I'm interested in it, you know, what, if you if you've been involved if you if you looked if you looked at the curriculum what do you think about it what do you think is missing um you know if you and then maybe maybe get into a little bit about contributing like if you haven't contributed why not like what what kind of things have you you know get 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 a finger on the pulse of why folks haven't contributed to the curriculum um things like that so it's okay. very very curriculum focused but not yeah. exclusively and not just on users either it's more of like a it's more of like a general curriculum survey okay <clears throat> All right, I can, I can probably not today, but I can draft something. Okay, the, the, thing, the thing that I, the, 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 the genesis of this is like, I kind of don't know if we're building the right stuff. Like I know from the stats, like what people have used, right. but that doesn't really tell me much. I, what drives my involvement in the project is, <clears throat> I mean, even outside of just 
like the open source elements, it's, it's actually to help the industry learn automation. I mean, right. and so like I, like that, that has to be, I have to get more information on that. I have to get more information on, are we actually meeting that goal or are we, are we even aiming towards that goal? So that's kind of what the, the survey started off as. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I think, you know, this, this goes back to the, the Henry Ford quote about if, if, it, if I'd asked my customers what they wanted, they would have told me faster, faster horses. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for the audience that NRE Labs is targeting, there may be a lot of, I don't know what I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it'll be important to not be too open-ended in how, how the, the, the questions are asked. Yeah. Right. Be be very directed and and um, prescript. Well, not not quite prescriptive, but um, yeah. Just be. I, yeah. I, basically, I, don't be like what. Le you know, don't 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 just ask questions like what lessons would do you wish we had? Because like if they knew what lessons they wanted to to learn about, they would have learned about it already. Right. Exactly. I, I see what you're saying. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I will. Um, so it sounds like you want to take an initial stab at that. Address. Yeah, um, I'm, I my 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 calendar is a mess today and tomorrow, but I'm wide open on Thursday, so I can I can plan on put that on my list for Thursday. Okay, sounds good to me. Um, cool. The um <laughs> the, the 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 only thing on the uh, on the agenda uh, thus far is um, or, or the remaining items on the agenda are the next steps for the curriculum and the antidote platform. The curriculum is very straightforward. In fact, I. We'll just we'll just call this. I'll you know I haven't I haven't um, done the uh, the the kickoff posts in the forum. I'll do that today. We'll consider this. We'll consider this the the official kickoff for the curriculum release because I I know that that's more tangible. I may wait on the antidote the next antidote release just because I want to figure out where things are at mm -hmm. um, there a little bit. Um, so we, I might wait there. I do have a note to, to I, do, I do have something to mention on the antidote um, thing because we actually did, we, we did like a second patch release uh, over the weekend. Um, very minor thing. Um, but to, to circle back onto the curriculum first, uh, the reason that's solid is because we have curriculum releases planned out kind of ad infinitum, like through, uh, through the summer practically. So we kind of know where that's at. At a minimum, what we'll be publishing is the next stage in the Git lesson um, uh, because that's, um, that's where we started with the uh, Labs and Latte video series, and so we're just going to keep keep going uh, down that path. So that'll be version 1.0, or 1.1.1, I guess, I think. Yeah, what are we on? 1.1.0, yeah, 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 yeah. So it'll be 1.1.1, sort of a minor release, just because it's just an update to the um, to the, uh, to the to the Git lesson. There's also been some fixes. Uh, in fact, speaking of Olivier, Olivier submitted a PR to, to, to make a minor fix to the existing Git content. Um, so... Okay. That's cool. Um, so that'll be part of that as well. And, and any, any other fixes that, that come up, there were, there were a few things, um, there were a few things in the, uh, um, in the launch that we noticed. In fact, I can just bring up the curriculum real quick. I can, sh I can share some of those, uh, issues. The Ansible lesson has an issue. Um, I'll ping Sean today and ask if he's had any progress on that. He said he wanted to ask some internal Ansible engineers, um, if they have any, uh, ideas. At first, I thought this might have been a VQFX issue, but he's uh, since it, it only seems to be happening with this one module, um, and uh, and the, the VQFX in this lesson is is operating normally otherwise. So like it's being like uh, the the NRE lab, the antidote platform is actually at, you know configuring it properly. It seems to be working just fine for everything else, but just for this one module, uh, Junos Fax, uh, it's having this SSH protocol banner, and so he wanted to ask some internal folks if they knew what the issue was. He says that he thinks that there's some sort of timeout uh, parameter that he might be, that we might be able to adjust. Um, but I haven't heard from him on that. So I'll ping him on that and see what's going on. Uh, the other issue that was brought up and I haven't had a chance to try to, or I haven't been able to reproduce this yet, but an, another user reported that there was an issue with uh, the Stackstorm lesson. Um, that's about all I know. Uh, like I said, I haven't been able to reproduce it. So I'll, uh, I'll poke into that and see, see what's going on. Stackstrom is another one of those lessons. It's a very complicated lesson. So it, 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 it does pop up on the radar every once in a while. Um, fortunately, it doesn't look it's like it's the whole lesson. It's just two of the stages, 
seem to be, you know, failing to initialize and it obviously is intermittent because I haven't been able to reproduce it. So we'll give this a shot. Um, if we can't reproduce it, we might just have to say, you know, look, it doesn't, can't reproduce it. So if you can't reproduce it, it's really hard to fix. Anyway, there's, there's issues like that. What I'll do is I'll create the, um, I'll create the kickoff post as, as, as is the uh, standard, you know, sort of release process. I'll create that today and basically say, look, we're aiming, we're aiming to do this release, you know, effectively by the end of the week. Um, and we'll, uh, and we'll, we'll publish it, um, you know, basically over the weekend. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to drop at the bottom of the hour, just by FYI. Yeah, no worries. That's effectively, oh, oh that's right. I wanted one more thing. Um, Antidote next steps. Like I mentioned, the, the, the platform features that are next from a, or the features that are next from like sort of an antidote platform perspective are actually a little bit more long term. So there's not a huge need to kick that off like right now. I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll, uh, I'll spend more time doing some proper triage uh, for what will be 0 0.6.0 for that. Um, I do want to mention the relaunch version was 0.5.0. Uh, I very briefly over the weekend deployed a new version with a fix, uh, 0.5.1, which made one very, very minor change, and that is the way that we get the curriculum into all of the lesson environments. Um, you might notice uh, that in the middle of the relaunch week, we had some variation here in the lesson startup time. Now these were, there were still plenty of, plenty of lessons that spun up quickly, but as you can see, some of the lessons took upwards of 150 and in, in some very extreme cases, over 200 um, seconds to start, which admittedly is still pretty quick if you're talking, if you're comparing it to some other sort of envir learning environments, 200 seconds is not like that big of a deal. But um, from an, from an, if you look at it, if you look at an average, like what, what we are accustomed to, especially one of the reasons why we moved to bare metal is because we can, provision any lesson in, in under in under a hundred seconds and in most cases under a minute um, which is which is nice but the um, but the you know that portion of the week we saw some variation and, and some really crazy variations and uh, I think I figured out why um, it turns out that um, the well I, I basically one of the ways that we've um, deployed curriculum content into the environment is through git so the lesson content is in the NRE Labs curriculum GitHub repository. And so what we did was we, uh, we effectively downloaded this repo every time we wanted to start a lesson. Well, it's actually worse than that uh, because uh, there were, we didn't use any sort of shared directories on the cluster. So what we ended up doing was cloning it once for every single lesson endpoint <laughs> in a lesson and then doing all of that uh, for, for each instance of that lesson that was spawned. So you're basically cloning a Git repository, maybe, you know, total of five to seven to 10 times for every lesson that's launched. And that takes a few seconds. And of course, it's dependent on internet connectivity and, you know, GitHub and all of that stuff. Uh, the reason we did this, by the way, is because it ended up being a lot easier than managing sort of shared directories on the cluster. Uh, it was just one of those things early on in the project where I was like, look, it's obviously not a great you know, thing to do from a performance perspective, but we've got other problems right now, so let's just do that. Well, well, we've actually grown a lot since then, and now this is a pretty big bottleneck. And I think what, what happened in this variation was uh, GitHub released a new command line tool called GH around this time, like right as soon as we started seeing this variation, and I'm pretty sure they started to do some rate limiting. Uh, which meant that the, the, the time that it took to download those re the, the curriculum uh, for each endpoint was slowed, and as a result, lesson startup time was slowed. So I said, look, I've wanted to move away from this model for a long time, just we have the curriculum already cloned on each server in the cluster. All we've gotta do is just look at it and copy those files in directly from the file system. So I made the necessary code changes to Syringe, um, spent the weekend testing them, they worked great, and I just deployed it as a patch version on Sunday. And we are off and running. And so hopefully no, no more variations like that. Alright. So that was a patch version. Um, we will, like I said, I'll I'll go back to the um, to the to the to the project um, board for 0.5 or 0.6.0 and do some triaging. And when I'm ready to do a kickoff, probably next week, I would I'll, I would expect to do a kickoff, just because it's it's easy to do the kickoff um, in terms of when you know in terms of establishing a date for when that version will land. That that will that will be a little harder to figure out. So we'll we'll address that next week, I think. Okay. 
Um, I am going to have to drop off. Anything else we should cover? Nope, that's all on the agenda for me. All right, sounds good. Onward and upwards. Indeed. All right, bye. Thanks, bye.